Hi, welcome to iFlip for Math MathCast, Lesson 7-5, Dividing Decimals by 10, 100, or 1,000. I'm Mrs. Gooding, and our quote today is by Henry Ford, who invented the Ford car. He said, there is joy in work. There is no happiness except in the realization that we have accomplished something. And I hope you're learning to enjoy some hard work in math because it really is satisfying to know that you've mastered really hard stuff. So I'm really proud of your hard work this year. Our learning goal today is to mentally divide decimals by 10, 100, or 1,000. And I know you guys always get excited anytime you hear about mental math because you know it's going to be a really fun lesson. So let's get started. There's some fun cars that he invented. Our one learning goal today is to count the number of zeros in 10, 100, or 1,000, and then move our decimal to the left that many places. We've done things that are a lot like this before, so let's see exactly how we're going to do that. I love this because I found some pictures of George Washington Carver, and we learned about him in another lesson. And he and Henry Ford worked on some ideas for biofuels and also on making car parts from soybeans. So I thought it was really cool that these inventors worked together, and I never knew that. Here is our first problem, 509 and 3 tenths divided by 1,000. Let's see how we're gonna work that problem. So before we look at our problem, I wanted to remind you of something. Um, we've talked about this before when we were dividing um, not decimals, just regular numbers, and we talked about the battle of the zeros when you have to take some of the zeros away. It's not exactly what we're doing in this case, but it's similar. Look at that problem down at the bottom of your screen, screen 24 divided by 8. Anytime we're taking a number, like the number 24, and we're dividing it by a number, we know that since we have 24 marbles, let's say, we divide it into groups of 8, we know that whatever number we get, it's going to be less than 24 because I'm dividing 24 up into smaller parts. So it's the same way with those decimal numbers up there. 509 and 3 tenths divided by 1,000. Whatever answer we have, it's going to be less than 509 for sure um, because we're dividing 509 into 1,000 parts. So the mental math strategy is super easy for this, but I just wanted you to be able to check your answer and realize whether or not it makes sense. When we're doing this, we would count those zeros in 1,000. So we, oops, I made a really funny mark. Let me get rid of that. Okay. Um, there's one zero, there's two zeros, there's three zeros. So we come over to our decimal and we're gonna move it to the left three places. So I would just go one, two, three, because there were three zeros. So I'm moving it to the left three places. Now my decimal's here, it's not here anymore. So my actual new answer looks like this. And I'm gonna put a zero here because our decimal says and, and you don't say and without having something in front of it. So grammat math grammatically, this makes sense to have this zero here. Um, this number is less than one, it's about half of one. And that makes sense because if I divide 509 into a thousand parts, I'm going to have less than one because 509 divided by 509 would be one. So if I divide it by a bigger number, it's going to be even less than that. So my number is definitely smaller now, even though it looks like it has more digits here on this side of the decimal, it's still much smaller than 509. Um, and that's important to know because if I'm dividing, I need to have a smaller number when I finish. So remember, just reviewing, we would read this number 5,093 ten thousandths because the three ends in the ten thousandths place. And I say that with a TH ending. Let's go ahead and try some practice problems. You're always moving the decimal to the left to make the number smaller. Always because you're dividing it up into smaller parts. So here is our first practice problem. Number one, 12 and 33 hundredths divided by 10. Remember the strategy that we used. We moved our decimals to the left, however many zeros were in that number we were dividing by. This only works if you have a one in front of those zeros. So don't try it divided by 40 or 50. It only works if it's 10, 100, or 1,000. Go ahead and try that and push play when you're ready. 
Did you write 1 and 233 thousandths? Let's see how we did that. So remember, the first thing we do is count how many zeros we have. And we only have one zero, so that means we're going to move our decimal one place to the left. So here we go. Let's move that decimal. And now it's right here in front of the one, so it's no longer here. Cross it out because you can't have two decimals in a number. So now our answer looks like this. And I always like to rewrite it just to make sure that that old decimal doesn't confuse my teachers. So my new answer is 1 and 233 thousandths. I would ask myself, does that make sense? If I divide 12 by 10, it's going to give me 1 and a remainder. And that's what I have here, 1 and some little parts left over. So that's perfect. Let's try another one. Number 2, 27 hundredths divided by 100. Go ahead and use your strategy and then push play when you're ready. Did you write 27 ten thousandths? Remember, if we sing the decimal song, we start at the decimal. Decimal tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths. That seven ends in the ten thousandths place. So we would read that 27 ten thousandths. Let's see how we worked that problem. So we count our zeros. We have one, two zeros. So we're going to move our decimal two places to the left. Now, when I do that, remember sometimes I don't have a digit there. So when I move it, one, two, I leave an empty space. So I've got to annex a zero to fill that place value position. My decimal is here now, not here anymore. So when I write my new number, it is 27 ten thousandths. And that makes sense because it's 27 ten thousandths is a much smaller piece of one pizza than 27 hundredths. So just remember that stuff we learned about decimals and amounts. Number three, 7,446 and 5 tenths divided by 1,000. Go ahead and work that push play when you're ready. Did you write 7 and 4,465 ten thousandths? Let's see how we worked that one. I want to point out to you that when you're working a problem that has both commas and decimals, you want to make sure you can tell the difference between them. Um, you don't want to miss a problem because a teacher can't read whether it's a decimal or a comma. Um, you also don't have to put a comma in 1,000, but you can. And I did in this case. You know I sometimes don't, and it's okay not to. Um, let's go ahead and work this problem. Let's count the zeros in 1,000. One, two, three. So I'm going to move my decimal three places to the left. One, two, three. Now my decimal takes over that comma space, and I no longer have a decimal here. So when I rewrite it, There's my final answer, 7 and 4,465 ten thousandths. So here is our practice word problem. If Henry Ford could drive 100 yards in 68 and 29 hundredth seconds, what was the time it took him to drive one yard? So if we're taking 100 yards and dividing it up, that should be a hint to you what you're going to use to work your problem. Go ahead and work that now and then push play when you're ready. Did you write 6,829 ten thousandth seconds? That would be correct. Let's see how we did that. Before we go to the next screen, we are taking 68 and 29 hundredths and dividing it by 100. That's going to tell us how much time it will take him to drive one yard. So we'll set that up in our problem now. So I didn't write this like a division problem with a house. I wrote it like a mental math problem, and that's important when you're doing mental math. So I count my zeros, one, two, and I'm going to move my decimal two places to the left. One, two, there's my new decimal position, out with the old decimal position. And when I rewrite this, remember, we've got a decimal that says and, so to make it mathematically, grammatically correct, we're going to put that zero in front of it. And that's our answer.
It's time to challenge yourself. My, I put a little quote in here. Thinking is the hardest work there is, which is the probable reason why so few engage in it. And I'm really proud of you guys for not being afraid of hard work and being willing to challenge yourself. Here it is. Mr. Ford is selling you a car for $7,342 on Tuesday. He is giving you 100 weeks to pay it off. How much will you have to pay him each week? I'm trying to be a little tricky here, but I hope you figure it out. Go ahead and show your work in your flip journal, explain your answer, and come back to school ready to check your answer. Finishing up, go ahead and review your learning goals. There was only one of them tonight. Do you feel like you mastered it? Is this a strategy you can remember, and what do you need to do to remember what strategy to use for this whole process? Go ahead and write down if you think you're at a level one, two, or three in your learning so that we know how to help you best when you come to school tomorrow. And if you have any questions, make sure you write them down in your flip journal. If you caught any mistakes, make sure you write it next to an exclamation point so that I can do push-ups tomorrow. Um, decimal division rocks. You've completed lesson 7-5. Dividing decimals by 10, 100, or 1,000. I can't wait to see you tomorrow.